welcome to the 47th episode of the But I'm Knitting podcast. My name is Ramona, I'm a knitter from Toronto, and welcome to my corner of the crafting world. You can find me on Ravelry as Mona Lee 81 You can find me on Instagram and Twitter as uh, Rome underscore Raven. I have a blog that I use occasionally um, called bottomknitting.blogspot.ca. See the blogs, but our blogger. I still never remember. And I also have an Etsy shop over on Etsy called Love Rome Yarns. So I've been gone for the past couple of weeks. Uh, the first week was me just not feeling that well. I said, okay, I'm didn't because I I did it, but I didn't really like how it came out, so I didn't bother with it. I said, okay, yeah, I'll just record it again later this weekend. Yeah, I'll just record it again. I'll record it again. Okay, maybe I'm just not gonna bother it and skip over it. And then that happened again last week. So hopefully this week I don't have, I have quite, well, I do have a little bit of progress to show you. It's not as much as what would really be for like three weeks worth of knitting or two and a half more closely because it's currently Monday. So let me just show you the stuff that I've worked on. Um, I've pretty much worked on my socks and I've worked on my, what was the other thing? My uh, doodler shawl. So let's start with the doodler shawl. Oh, sorry. Ignore the hair. It's kind of a mess. Hence the reason it's under this hat. Ugh. It'll be better next week. I can guarantee you that. I'm spending the rest of the week over at my friend's house, and she always insists on doing my hair. So, I'll take that out. So for my doodler shawl. So this is two weeks worth, I guess. Yeah, because last time you have you saw it. Hold on. Let me just untangle it somewhat. Right. Yes. Last time you had seen it, I had just finished off the cable section, which is section two, and now I'm on section three. And two weeks worth, this is what I've done. Um, it's a lot of short rows, and I'm liking the color, and I'm kind of happy I didn't change it. Although, like, there are other options I could have used, but I do really like it. Um, I had a hard time putting it down. I actually worked on it yesterday from, like, nine o'clock at night till like almost two o'clock in the morning that usually by as soon as by about 12.05 hits I put it down because Sunday is definitely over but uh yeah so I continued working on it so hold on I can't even extend it fully with how big that it's gotten see without it falling off needles so this is it kind of bunched up so that's the part that I'm working on hold on put that back there uh, this way and then this part up here the pink part lapel pink part that is the cable that it's currently on and the yarn that I'm using is all yarn that I've dyed myself I'm on my final color that has no name so this is what's what it is it's kind of a corally type of color coral red type of thing um, I've decided, I've determined which uh, border I'm going to be doing just by looking through the instructions. I've never done a Pico border. I've just heard people complain about it, but I want to do a Pico border, so I'm going to do one. I still have two. I'm in the middle. I started the second wedge, so I got another two wedges after that. So I've got a long way to go before I have to really worry about it, but that's what I want to do. And I have enough, and it says I have to use another one of my previous colors before, and I think I have enough to do that, so that's great. Okay, so that's one down. The other project I worked on was uh, my uh, scrappy socks. So hold on. It's one, two. Okay, so here are my socks so far. That's one sock and two socks. I'm actually very proud of how far that it's gone. Um, I had a hard time putting them down. They match and it's not until you reach about here that you start seeing the differences because I was using self striping yarns for them. So that section up there, the yellow one, the orange here, the red and the orangey here, and then this part down here, these are from the same one as well. So I think I'm putting in, on this sock, I'm putting in my last uh, scrappy sock color. According to when I measured it on my feet, it looked like it's about right before I put on the toe, which is going to be the same color used for the heel cuffs and toes on both of them. Um, I'm using my regular vanilla sock um, pattern, 64 stitches, go round and round and round, two by two ribbing for the cuff, 
uh, fish kiss peel, fish kiss, no, fish lips kiss heel, and then afterwards I'll do a regular toe, I don't know what it's called, um, and then kitchener it all together, and socks will be done. I could actually probably get these finished within the next couple days, we'll have to see. So those are pretty much the only thing I really worked on. I didn't really touch my grandfather's uh, sweater, which I keep wanting to call a shawl. And I didn't touch my Find Your Fade. That pretty much covers all of my major projects. I definitely did not touch my blanket at all. Um, so that's pretty much it for those. Um, but uh, let's see. A few weeks ago, there was a Craftsy Unlimited uh, deal going on where you can get to watch um, all, of your craft, all of the crafty classes for like free for a weekend. Um... It was the same weekend that I had gotten sick, and I didn't realize until maybe about, uh, I didn't remember until about three hours before, this is after somebody sent me a message to remind me, that I haven't watched the video that I wanted to watch, so I quickly took notes and as many things I did. Um, I did a class called, uh, how is it, How to Dye Yarn? I just remember it was by Sarah Iyer, and she has two classes on there, so I watched them both and took as many notes as possible. I really only got notes for the first one. Um, but I decided I was going to buy these classes. I can't afford them limited on a regular basis. Um, there ended up being a sale, so yay me. I got I got uh, two of the classes for her, and I'm really happy with the results since I really got to try them. Um, I struggled for quite some time to get um, a solid, and I'll let you see the differences in what I was doing by myself, at least what the yarn would look like in comparison to what I did, to how it turned out when I followed her instructions. So this is that skein of teal that I dyed from a while back. While it is a beautiful shade, you could still see a lot of light patches, this is more like what you would consider a tonal, right? I like it, it's pretty, but it's not what I was going, what I what I had in mind when I was trying, uh, when I was trying this out. Um, however, this one was done with the technique that she showed. It's solid, absolutely solid. This is only uh, about a 50 gram skein right now, so... Look at the differences in in color for that, right? You can really see the difference. I'm I really do want to try it out on a full size skein, but following her instructions, it shows me I can get a solid. It is beautiful. So um, these were done last week, Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I think it was it Wednesday. I can't remember if it was either Wednesday or Thursday. And these are the three that I came out with. So the first one I did, so basically these are, well, some of the colors are ones that came straight out of the, the dyed powders. I didn't do any kind of adjustments. First one I did was this beautiful, beautiful hot pink. Um, I just want to try it out because I've never just done a straight hot pink and gotten such wonderful solids. So um, there were a few things that I didn't have, like I didn't have the, um, the crochet cotton. I don't crochet, so I have no reason to have like cotton threads pretty much. So, but I did have... Um, crochet, not crochet, cotton yarn, it's just this, it's just leftover I had, and I actually really like the way it comes out on the ties to the point that I actually want to keep it like that, so um, I used uh, just the hot pink for this one, and then when I went to go change out for the second one, I didn't bother cleaning out the water, because it's like, I'm just testing out to see where things go, and then I ended up doing, it, but I ended up adding blue to get this one done, a sapphire blue, I think, and then this is the blue that came out from that one, turned out nice finished with that one and I said okay well I want to try yellow the problem is when I put the skein and my third skein inside the water because it had a bit of the pink in it and it had a bit of the blue in it it turned it a lilac color like a really pale a really pale uh purple and I said okay I'm still going with it my mom watched the room she's like that's not going to turn out the way that you want it to my mother does um She's a pastry chef and she does, and she icings cake, so she understands colors and how they work. But for her, everything is pretty much on a white base. Everything pretty much comes out pastel. So for me, I said, well, I'm like, it doesn't really matter. I want to see what this thing will turn out with. And despite the fact it started on a lilac base, this is what I ended up with. Um, there ended up being a little bit of uh, dark spots in there that I did not realize was in there, and it kind of gave a little bit of splotching and dark colors on it. That's okay, so I just decided to like let's add a little bit of black onto it, which kind of turned green instead. So I haven't decided what I'm going to call this one, but I'm going to definitely retry this on a full skein at a later date. So I put in a yellow, I think it was a sunshine yellow, so apparently sunshine yellow and a 
purple can turn it into a golden wheat type of color. Um, and the green kind of reminds me of oxidization. <laughs> when you get a, um, like a statue that they, that's done in like a, not a statue. Like I'm thinking about the rooftop buildings from way back in the day when they put them in copper. And then afterwards, if you leave it long enough, it starts to turn green. That's what this makes me think of. So I really, really do like that. I think it turned out really beautifully. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I have not decided, but these are the three of them. I'm excited about that. These are just going to go in my stash for now, and yeah, I'll figure something out eventually. It's not enough to actually sell. It's only like 50 gram skeins. That's pretty much what I had left. Um, but I did spend a good upon the last week uh, whiting off one of my knotted balls of yarn. Um, I had, uh, I don't remember if it was from my cone or if it was from a skein, but it had fallen. And when it had fallen, I didn't have enough ties in it, and it just became a huge tangled mess. So I basically sat on there and spent quite a few evenings detangling it. Um, I don't remember where I left that ball. I think I put it in one of the bags over there, but it's okay. So I got this. I got at least one skein, whole skein, that I can dye. I don't think I'm going to get around to it this week because I'm not going to have time to do it. So it is what it is. I'll get around to it. And I'm looking forward to it, but I still need to get more undyed yarn. Um, so... Uh, since I'm going to be away from my house for this weekend and a half or so, um, pretty much Wednesday to Sunday, I'm going to be gone. Um, I have determined I need to bring something with me and I was thinking about it and, uh, actually what one of my brothers, he looked at a pair of socks I was wearing. I think they're my Tiberius socks. I don't have it here with me, but I'll put a picture of it, I guess here. Um, my Tiberius socks. It was from a Cookie A sock club that I joined, and I loved them. It was No, it was my Spock socks. Sorry, not the Tiberius. Tiberius I loaned to my cousin, who has never given it back. She loves them so much, though, but she's one of those people who really does take care of things, so um, I'll leave those with her, and I'll make my own. So I've determined that I wanted to make uh, another one of those socks, because I really did actually enjoy both of those sock patterns as I worked on them. So here's the thing. I realized that's what I want to do. And I'm going to do it. So I pulled out some yarn out of my stash. And as you can quite clearly tell over there, the stash has been reduced. Um, it has not all been used up, but a lot of it's going to be de-stashed later on in April. So hopefully. Um, but here's what I have um, to work on. Um, I have, I got this last year. It's by Richard DeVries. I got this from... Um, I got this from, um, trying to remember, it's called Buff, Buffed Rosewood. I got this from uh, Knitter's Guild, I think from Yarnspiration. I can't remember the name of the uh, the shop that came in to, uh, that to, uh, to the, the shop, the shop that came in to vend yarn at our guild meeting. So I got this and I got this. So that leaves me with uh, self-striping. I have way more than enough for heel cuffs and toes. So I'm going to do heel cuffs and toes for this. Or I'm going to wind off uh, some grams of yarn for the heel cuffs and toes for, the, for this. For these socks. But then on these ones, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find probably, or maybe I'll use some of my little bits of my white undyed. And I'm going to make either the Spock socks or the Tiberius socks. I have not decided. Hold on. My Spock socks are blue, so then this would be the Spock socks in the burgundy color. And then this would be the Tiberius socks, and it would also have the white um, white heel cuffs and toes. That's that plan. There's also the option of another self-striping. Um, I got this from one of the ladies at my knitting circle. Because um, nobody at my, at my knitting circle, at least my Tuesday one, really seems to knit socks with the exception of like one other person. So I don't know where she had gotten this. It's from Color Works, hand painted. Um, it's a self striping, and that. So I could end up doing that instead of this, or I could just eventually end up doing them. I'll, I'll eventually end up doing them both. I haven't quite decided exactly what I'm gonna do. So I've got. So that means I've got my next set of projects lined up and generally ready to go. Um, and since I work tomorrow, that means I gotta set up everything tonight and pack my bag tonight in order to be ready for the week, for the for the time that I'm spending over at my friend's house. Um, she's actually one of my close friends. I usually, because I now work on Sundays, because usually if I see her, it's usually 
before I was working at my job, I'd end up staying over at her place on Sunday nights, sorry, on Saturday nights to Sunday nights, but because I work on Sundays and we live in two different cities, we can't really, you know, stay at each other's houses. So that is my plan for, for this weekend. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. And the weekend afterwards is actually my birthday weekend. And I've decided I'm going to, I, me and uh, one of my brothers, who I call the other number one, um, he, the two of us together, we strategize to get my oldest brother to basically say, we're going to be hanging out together, all five of us, yes, I'm the oldest of five, all five of us, we're going to be hanging out for my birthday, for my birthday, I'm the oldest, I want everybody with me, so um, we're going to be, I don't know what we're going to be doing, it's probably just going to be like a movie night, pizza night type of thing, I just want to spend it with all of my siblings, and it's not easy to get that done. Um, the younger ones, like the three younger ones, they're under the age of 18 and they live in a city far away. My other brother, he's a very, very busy person, but uh, my uh, other, my uh, the other number one um, decided, uh, took a nice approach of uh, telling my brother's girlfriend about it, my oldest brother's girlfriend about it. And she's basically there like, you should spend quality time with your siblings. They want to spend time with you. So that freed him up. He has no choice. He has to come. So I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, and then, yeah, we're all going to be, I think, we're, ha we're all hanging out at my uh, my dad and my stepmom's house. So I'm looking forward to that. And that is pretty much it for knitting stuff going on, with the exception of, hold on a second, let me go get it. Okay, come frolic with us. So they have these, uh, the Knitter's Frolic is coming up um, at the end of April, Saturday, April 28th. Uh, it's going to be at the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. And that, sorry, so that's the front, and that's the back. I will try to put the information on the uh, on the description box below, so everybody can get to see. So for those who are local and they want to go, they can go. Um, there's supposed to be a podcaster meetup that I remember. Um, there is a knit along going on. Um, so anybody who had gotten yarn from last year. Um, you know, finish up those projects, wear them out to the frolic. It's just a knit along. Um, there's a group on the on on the in the knitters. There's a thread in the wrap in the Ravelry's Knitters Guild. Does that sort of make sense? Ravelry Knitters Guild thread inside the 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 group for the th for the guild. There is a knit along going on. Um, I decided not to participate. And that's only because I actually sat down there and thought about it and realized only thing I bought other than food at the Frolic last year was a knitting bag. I did not buy yarn. I don't know why I didn't buy yarn. I had every intention of doing it, but I didn't realize I did not buy any, which seemed odd. So this year, I'm definitely going to be buying something, even if it's just one skein. There's, there, there's a bunch of other stuff that I want to get, but like... You got to be realistic. Like, I was happy when I managed to get this all down to this, you know? So I'm hoping I'll be able to to buy something. So at least for next year, you know, if they decide to do the knit along again, I actually have something to knit for it. So that's it for that. Um, the final thing, this is more of a, I guess, a kind of a personal thing. Um, on Saturday, I didn't even realize until I was already, like, practically at church, there was a youth day that was a youth evening service at my church. So I didn't get to see them practice or anything like that. But um, my little brother, my um, sorry, the other one, and my little sister, my baby sister, they actually did um, in a kind of like a spoken word poetry type of thing with a ukulele. It was adorable. So I'm going to actually put the video in after this episode. Um, you'll see how much they've grown since you saw them uh, last year when they did uh, their thing, their own individual things. Um, the middle brother, the youngest brother, didn't surprise me. He never, never likes doing any kind of public things. But he did pose for a picture with me, so I will maybe I'll put that picture up. I haven't quite decided. We'll have to see. So that's everything for this week. Um, I don't know. Well, hopefully next week I will actually have something more to show. Maybe I'll do it in little clippets. Instead of doing like a full length episode, I don't know. It might be more fun doing little clippets. I don't know. So that is going to be everything for today. I think I already said that, but thanks for watching. Bye.
Jasmine. Hi. We have a poem for you. It's called An Iron Poem. I'm super happy when I'm with my family. I'm super excited. I'm super excited when I eat 